so this is just a quick little inequality. So I'll go through this nice and quickly. So this is going to be x squared minus 4x minus x plus 4 bigger than x plus 11. Then what you do is you take everything to the one side. And so that would give us x squared minus 5x uh, minus x minus 7. OK, I just did that all in one step. Then we can put, um, wait, sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was correct. And then that's going to give us x squared minus 6x minus 7. Then you can factorize. Now, here is where students get it completely wrong. What they then do is they say, um, so let me just say here that this is wrong. They then say, oh, x minus 7 is bigger than 0, or x plus 1 is bigger than 0. Guys, that is not correct. Um, that is not correct at all. Wow, there's more people joining. They, um, that is not correct at all. So what you need to do is the following. You need to draw yourself a little timeline. Now, what would the answer be? What would the answer be for this one? And what would the answer be for that one? Well, that would be a 7. So there's a 7. And then what would this one be? Minus 1. OK. Now, there are multiple ways that you could do it from this next part. Um, I've got two main ways that I normally teach. I'm just trying to think what will be the best one for now. I think the best one that students like is the following. Let me show it like this. So what I do is the following. I draw my timeline. And then I look at this over here. Now, what type of graph is that? That is just a normal parabola. So I draw the parabola like this. And if you don't like this method, just let me know and I can maybe show you a different method. Um, OK, so that's a parabola. Now, what do we want to know? We want to know where is this parabola bigger than 0? Where is it bigger than 0? What does that even mean? It means above the x-axis. It means above the x-axis. So where would that be? Um, that would be over uh, here and over here. That is where the graph is above the x-axis. And so we can say that the answer will be when x is smaller than minus 1, because that's all of this, or when x is bigger than 7. And that will be all of that over there. And that is the answer for this question. OK, some people are asking me to please do the other one. No problem. Let's have a look at the other method. Um, not all people like that method. OK, <laughs> here come more comments. So can you please do another method? Um, all right. So guys, if you want to do this in a different way, let me quickly show you. So what you would have is the following. Let me just go to a new page. x squared minus 6x minus 7 is bigger than 0. Oh, that doesn't look very nice. Then what you do is you factorize once again. OK, so what you do, guys, you still need to draw a number line that you always have to do. So you put a 7 over here and a minus 1. What you now do is you divide. You have divided. Um, Amashley, I see you've raised your hand. You can just type it in the comments. Um, Maybe you push that button by mistake. Some people do that. So what we see now is that there are three different intervals. OK, three different intervals. I'm going to call this A, interval B, and interval C. What you do is you choose a number inside A. So what number could you choose? Well, it's any number that is smaller than minus 1. So we could maybe choose, I don't know, maybe we could choose minus 2. So what you do is you put minus 2 inside the x place over there. So you plug minus 2 wherever you see x, and you see if your answer is going to be a negative or a positive. If you do it correctly, you'll see that in this interval, it is a positive. OK, then you move on to the next interval, which is interval number B. So you choose any number between here, any number you like. I'm going to choose 0. Then you plug 0 into the x and the x, and you, uh, you multiply these two together, and you see what you get. Either you get a negative or you get a positive. And so this one will give us a negative. OK, there we go. 
then you choose a number in this interval over here. So you can choose any number that you like. I'm going to choose the number eight. So you plug eight into the place of X and you see eight minus seven, eight plus one, and that will give us a positive. All right, so now what we can do is we have to go back to the question, which is this part over here. And they're wanting us to find out where is this bigger than zero? Bigger than zero, what does bigger than zero mean? Bigger than zero means positive, right? If something is bigger than zero, then it means that it is positive. Okay, um, and so where would it be positive? Well, we can see that the positives are all over, uh, it's this interval over here and this interval over here. So we will say that the answer is anything where X is smaller than minus one, which is this part over here, or X is bigger than seven. Okay, by the way, if you like to use interval notation instead, like Pablo, you asked me now, you could say X is an element from negative infinity up to negative one, or uh, from seven to infinity. Of course, you can also do it like that as well.